Hi everyone, welcome to another video. And in this video, we're going to discuss the integration between ServiceNow and Terraform Cloud. So let's get started. So here on the screen, as you can see, uh, we have a workflow in which the user starts off with the ServiceNow catalog. And in this case, I can be sitting on my workstation here. I don't necessarily need to know a whole lot about Terraform. So in this case, the operations team, for example, will create modules in Terraform and then expose these uh, modules or variables for those modules inside the ServiceNow catalog. So then a user could just select what they need, uh, fill out a form inside of ServiceNow, submit the ticket, and that goes ahead and creates the resources that they need um, wherever that wherever that needs to happen, whether that's in the cloud or on-prem. So the workflow is as follows on the screen here. I order something from, from the catalog of ServiceNow, and then I have an approval request. So the request comes in, I can approve it, or a team gets to approve it after they review it. Uh, again, this is a step that you can uh, keep or you can eliminate altogether and automate the, the, the process fully. And then uh, number three here, this triggers a run inside of Terraform Cloud. And here I'm talking about Terraform Cloud, the business tier, uh, the integration, the ServiceNow integration is only available in the Terraform Cloud business tier. And uh, from here, if I am going to provision resources in a cloud, I don't need step number four here. So Terraform Cloud is gonna go directly and talk to let's say Azure and provision resources in Azure directly. However, in the demo that I'm gonna show you today, we are going to provision on-prem resources that live in VMware. So basically I'm gonna create a Windows 2019 server uh, image or VM, and that's gonna run in my VMware uh, vCenter environment. So for that to work, we have what we call cloud agents that sit inside of your environment and polls for jobs uh, that occur in Terraform Cloud. It's an outbound connection. Uh, I created an entire video just talking about this feature uh, called Cloud Agents within Terraform Cloud Business Tier. Uh, you can see here the at the bottom the network connectivity that's required. So all that's required is an outbound connection on port 443 HTTPS. And you can see the host names or endpoints that, uh, uh, that your uh, on-prem environment will need to talk to. So basically the vSphere environment, uh, you would have a cloud agent running, whether it run it as a Docker container or a, a system process that uh, will continually talk to Terraform Cloud and ask every second, hey, do you have a job for me? Do you have a job for me? And so on. So let's get started and take a look at a demo and see how this all works. Okay. All right, so on the right-hand side here, I have my terminal running and it's running the logs from the cloud agent. On the left-hand side, I have ServiceNow. And as you can see, I can go to the catalog. Uh, so if I'm a regular user, I just want to provision some resources. Uh, I can go and browse my categories. I created an infrastructure category here. And I've exposed just a couple of items here. There, we have a list of things that you can do. Uh, this is just basically to show uh, provisioning resources with variables and deleting a workspace. So I want to provision some resources with some variables. As you can see here, we've got the uh, VCS repository. Uh, this one's VMware VM, I've already defined that. And then some variables you can see. So the vSphere server, this is the IP address or the fully qualified domain name for the vSphere server that needs to, uh, that we need to talk to. This is the vCenter IP. VM count, how many VMs I want to create. In this case, I just want to create one. The password for the vCenter server. I want to create a, uh, a VM with 2048 RAM. So two gigs of RAM. Uh, this is the user that's required to access the vSphere or vCenter server. Uh, a template that I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this Windows 2019 template that uses a thick uh, provisioning, disk provisioning. And I give it a computer name, two CPU, two virtual CPUs, and finally a VM name that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna call it server. 
And once I fill out the form, I can order that and check it out. Uh, remember the approval process. So now I define myself as the approval. Of course, you can define a, uh, what do you call it, a, a group of approvals, for example. Just to keep it simple, I'm the approval. So you can see here, I got one ticket ready for approval. So this ticket ends in 19. I can go through it and make sure everything is okay. And if I'm satisfied with the request, I can approve the request. And uh, once we approve the request, keep an eye on the right-hand side here to, uh, to see how the agent is, is waiting for jobs. See, it's saying waiting for next job. And in just a few seconds, it's going to pick up that new job that we just requested. And there it is. You can see now that the uh, new job has been seen. If I go over to my Terraform Cloud, uh, window I can look for a ticket here you can see the request item number 10,019 so this is the one that we just requested uh, here's the request number and if we click inside you can see that we're in the plan phase past the cost estimation phase this really doesn't apply here because we're configuring VMware or uh, provisioning inside of VMware if you're to provision in Azure, for example, you're going to see an estimate of the amount of dollars that you're going to uh, use for this particular uh, operation. And if we expand the, the plan here, I can show you what actually is going to get created. And I'm showing this behind the scenes, of course. As a user, uh, you don't see any of this. You don't care about any of this. Uh, this is all created for you. But you can see here there is a vSphere virtual machine that's going to get created with some parameters. Uh, we're cloning we're cloning a template. Uh, we got two disks that will get provisioned, a network interface. So in total, we're adding one element or one resource. And uh, the output will expect an IPv4 and IPv6 address to show up at the end after we've provisioned this. Uh, this takes about uh, 14 minutes or so. So uh, we're definitely going to stop the video and return after everything is complete. But before we do that, we can quickly take a look at the um, um, if we refresh this actually. So back to looking at this as a user, you refresh the, the request that came through, you can see the, uh, the progress here. You know, workspace gets created, the plan is queued, there's planning. So this is uh, ServiceNow getting feedback from, from Terraform Cloud. You can see it's still applying, it's still applying, and so on, right? So you can keep track of it right in ServiceNow. You don't have to go to Terraform Cloud. Uh, as you can see in Terraform Cloud, as we show, we've seen, applying is, is happening. It's going to take its sweet time. And if we were to go into vCenter, uh, I can see that there is already a resource that's in process being provisioned right now. I called it server one. So again, this will take its time until it's ready to go. And uh, we'll get that feedback in just a little bit. So what I'll do, I am going to uh, stop the video and we'll resume once the resource is created. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, the apply has completed successfully. Uh, here you can see on the right hand side the cloud agent says it's finished handling the run it's waiting for its next job and if you look at the output from Terraform we are given the IPv4 and IPv6 address for uh, for that machine uh, in VMware I can see the machine has already been configured um, I can log into it I can see it so it's all good to go. And if I go back here and refresh the screen on ServiceNow, you can also see the output from Terraform apply. Here's the IPv4 and IPv6 output that I can then, as a user, I see those and I can use those to 
continue what I need to do in terms of provisioning or maybe passing this over to some other tool to continue configuring the VM, for example, or to run some scripts and so on. All right, so hopefully that, that's been helpful to show you how this is all done. A couple more things I want to show you behind the scenes from a Ser ServiceNow service management console. Uh, you can see the Terraform catalog. And I don't need this anymore, so we can make this bigger. Uh, here we can see the integration that uh, HashiCorp created with ServiceNow. There are multiple other things that you can do, like apply a run, apply a run flow, uh, delete workspace. Where I'm going to run this as well in just a bit to delete the workspace I just created. And a few other things that you can expose to, uh, to your users in the catalog as we saw here earlier. And uh, actually now I just want to quickly show you the code if you're interested in understanding the, the Terraform code. It's very simple. It ha we have three files, the main.tf, the output.tf, variables.tf. And we start with the variables. Uh, you know, as we, sh as we saw from the front end on the ServiceNow side, the vSphere user password server I'm not giving any defaults here, as this will be required. Um, and on the ServiceNow side, I've created a lot of default values that you can use, but of course you can change. And uh, then the Windows template, the computer name, the VM count, the VM name, the CPU and the RAM. The output file will give you the version, the IPv4 and the IPv6, and then the main.terraform file here we are using the vSphere provider uh, and giving the uh, or getting a lot of information. So the, the data center, the uh, data store, the cluster, the network, the template that we're going to use. <clears throat> and then here's the resource that we're going to create, which is a VM. And just filling out a lot of those variables that we specified from before. You can see we're creating a network interface, two disks, and here's where we're cloning the template uh, and running a few customizations. So we can see the computer name, um, adding this to a work group, and so on. So that's pretty much it. Hopefully this has been helpful to show you how a workflow where you don't really need to know a whole lot about Terraform, you can expose this. Uh, information or variables that uh, that you want to your customers, uh, your internal customers, of course, and then they can use that form within ServiceNow to uh, order infrastructure using Terraform behind the scenes. Thank you for watching.